Welcome back to the Forensics Detailing. Before we get started on tires, do not forget to hit the subscribe button, the bell notification. Check us out on the Patreon page. Your support's very much appreciated. And we also have detailing fundamentals training for you. All the information in the description, as always. All those three things are fundamental to the channel. So check them out, help support the channel. Today we're talking about the new, and still, the new ultra high performance tires from you know the prestigious tire maker Bridgestone who have you know a premium tire brand and this is their new Potenza Sport so ultra high performance for people that are really interested in grip and handling maximum performance perhaps more of a dry tire but this also or a summary tire but this also advertises very good wet grip performance as well so an all-round performance tire and also for me, the important thing with the performance tire is being able to see how it performs on track as well as road. So I've driven these tires about a thousand miles across the Welsh mountains and valleys and glens, the beautiful Welsh scenery. Had an amazing, <laughs> amazing time in the last week, just burning round. I know these tires well. I've also had them for a day on the Bedford Autodrome GT circuit. So I've had a good chance to play around with them now. now so let's get started with this review, guys. Now, the first thing you always want to know when you get a tyre is, is it available in your sizes? You know, you've got the, the rim size, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, whatever your tyres is. Then you've got the, the width, then you've got the profile size and all this different stuff. So whenever I'm looking at a tyre, I go to tyre reviews because I can search for the tyre, put it in and list all of the different sizes, which is very important. You can also get a different price and you can also see reviews from people that have bought them and... <laughs> They've got a great YouTube channel which does a proper job of reviewing these tyres. I can give you a finger in the wind opinion, but that's nothing compared to actually formal testing. So check out tyre reviews, really good, useful kind of place to know. So that's where you can get your sizes. I'm running 18 inch 225 40 on the front, the BMW staggered setup, 245 35 on the rear. Okay, so they're available in good sizes for BMWs, M140 and M240, which is important because your options are very limited. So that's covering sizes. Now, other options, it's always important to talk about other options, isn't it? For this ultra, ultra high performance kind of primarily road tyre that you could use on track. Well, you have the discontinued Michelin Pilot Super Sports. You have the Goodyear Super Sports, are they? Or? I think they're called Goodyear Super Sports, uh, the relatively newer tyre as well. You have the Michelin um, PS4, just known as the PS4, isn't it? Um, they don't do the 4S's in the 18-inch standard size. Um, what else do you have there? There's another option that I'm missing. Now you have these new Bridgestone Batenzas. Um, and we've also you've also got the Kumo, which I think are a good option. Kumho PS91 Extras. Um, now, that moves us on to talking about price. Apologies if it's a little bit out of focus. Really, to get a full set of Michelin Pilot Sports, which are now discontinued, but you can still get them, you're paying about 500 quid. Um, Goodyear Super Sports, I'm not sure what you pay for those. Probably more than 400. So the Bridgestones cost me around 400 for the tyres unfitted. The Kumos you could probably get closer to about 300, even less than those, unfitted. PS4s, I'm not sure, they're probably going to be close to close to 450 to 500, I'd imagine. Should really research this properly, shouldn't I? And the Goodyear Sport, I would imagine, is probably closer, just over 100 a tyre. So it gives you a rough idea of prices. Apologies if I've got those slightly wrong, but I would say that this Bridgestone Potenza pr price is somewhere in the middle and it's where it should be for a premium brand ultra performance tyre. You can get these for about 75 to 80 for the front, slightly skinnier ones, and 110 for the wider ones, and about 400 for a full set. Right, so that's the competition and the prices. Now we're going to talk about the performance. Now let's just break this down into two categories, road and track. Now, the good news is, Dry grip, uh, wet grip, we got braking, noise, um, and wear. 
okay? I know there's probably other categories you can chuck in, but we'll just keep it simple. On the road, the dry grip, I would say, is absolutely superb. I've done the Evo Triangle, I've done the Brecon Beacons, I've been leaning on these tyres. Never once did I ever felt they were just going to slip out from me in the dry. Always really, really grippy. As good as anything I've ever driven on the M140 or the M240 on the roads. A hell of a lot of confidence in, in, in them in the dry. So it's a big tick for me. Do I feel like they've got the, the maximum dry grip with any of these? It's very hard to tell on the road. I'd say they're up there with the Mitchell and Pilot Super Sports. Um, virtually the same level of grip. Top class. Wet grip. This is a big tick for me. They advertise and talk about um, very good wet grip performance. Now they're still not a full, obviously a full wet tyre like some of your other ones where they're designed to be used in the wet. So they're a summer tyre with good wet performance. This is a big tick for me because I think there's a noticeable improvement with these tyres, particularly over the Michelin Pilot Super Sports, which are a little bit snappy in the wet. And I've come off, I've come off the track on the Michelin Pilot Super Sports in the wet a few times. Never good fun. So definitely more grip in the wet. Braking, great, nice and kind of, you really feel them bite in. Very, very difficult to um, kind of compare. Noise, I would say this is the first area where the performance probably isn't quite as good. I'd say they're a little bit more louder. There's a slight noticeable kind of roar coming off them. Very soft compound. So noise, not great, but nothing to put you off the tyre unless you're really sensitive to that sort of thing. If you are, you're probably not going to be using these types of tyres anyway. Where, well it's very hard to say from road use, but I suspect, I think this is an extremely soft compound and they're probably not going to wear as well, but that's based on a guess. So I'd say don't buy these tyres if you're looking for to get loads and loads of life out of them. That's not what they're about. They're a soft compound that grip really, really well in the dry, break well. I think perform really well in the wet as well. So it's a big tip. And so far I'd have no problems recommending these tyres to anyone. But now we move on to the second bit of what I want from a performance tyre. And that is track performance. And that is where I believe there's a massive problem with these particular tyres. Now first of all, the dry grip. I'd say it's up there with the Mitchell and Pilot Super Sports. But if I was trying to hot lap on the tyres and say which one would I think deliver the fastest time. I think the Michelin Pilot Super Sport might edge it by a, a tiny margin. Just felt these were a little bit squirmy, but overall, the grip is great. They never let go on me once, and you can really hurl the car into the corner. There is not a problem with grip on these tires, dry grip in my opinion. So it's a, it's a general tick. Let's say nine out of 10 where some of these other, like the Michelin Pilot Super Sports might be nine and a half out of 10, something like that. And the Kumos might be like eight and a half, something like that, to give you a rough idea. Uh, wet grip on track, unknown. Haven't, wrote, haven't driven them on a wet day, so we'll just leave that out. Braking on track, absolutely fine. Now, noise on track, who cares? Totally irrelevant, no one cares. Now here's the big issue, where? In my opinion, these tyres are totally unsuitable for track use because of one problem, they melt. Um, how quickly do they melt? Because some people will be watching the, the screen and saying, John, all road, all performance road tyres, if you put them on track, tend to melt. Well, they, no, they don't, that's not true. The Kumos are fantastic at that sense. Can't make those Kumos ever melt, even though it's a soft compound. So we did a formation lap, no problem. We're just poodling around three or four laps very slow then you come in you wait for everyone else to um you know go and go and crash or whatever because it's a bit chaotic for the first few laps i then went out and did a session of four laps where you have a warm-up lap and then you deliver a couple of fast laps then a cool down lap and in you come and we didn't go particular i didn't go particularly fast for that first lap because you never really do when i got in the first thing i did is check the offside front tire because that's the one that takes all of the punishment on an anti-clockwise kind of track and the shoulder of the tyre was melting 
deforming and the, the shoulder had been scrubbed off after that first set of four laps. Um, so I looked at it and I just tutted because I've seen it before. The Michelin Pilot Supersport does the same thing but not to the same extent as these. So straight away I knew I needed to suddenly start managing the tyres. Um, after the second run, the shoulder just looked absolutely destroyed and the smaller bit that was melted had gone wider and it looked, started looking really bad. Then after the third session and fourth session, basically the tyres were gone. I showed a couple of other people there, we're at the track day, and they, what started happening is these two sections here, which are on the outside, when it's on that other side, were also melting and just just to completely gone. A couple of guys looked at it and said, you probably don't want to go out on those. And I basically had to abandon the track day. I did one more afternoon session after lunch at some point after. Took it very easily. And at that point, the tyres had had enough. And if I was going to use them more, they would, it would just scrub them all down to the, to the cords, you know, and they'd been dangerous. So I had to leave myself some rubber on it. Um, so as always, you, you know, you can blame the tyres. You might be watching this and saying, John, you're just driving too hard on the track and the tyre can't take it. Yes, um, John, you didn't have your tyre pressures set up properly. I ran 31 on the front, 32 on the rears. It was a day where the track temperatures were absolutely perfect. It was about sort of 20 degrees out, clouds in the sky, but nice sunny day, a bit of warmth there, ideal track conditions. And the tyre temps got up to around sort of, on the TPMS monitor, up to 38 to 40, which is, you know, warming up, obviously. The pressures, we're trying to get the pressures up to about 35 to 36, and they went a little bit above that, but they were sort of in the window where I want the tyres to be, where they felt good. Um, so that shouldn't have caused the problem. That's what I always tend to run. Um, basically, I'm going to end the review here. Would I recommend these tyres to you? It's very simple. If you want maximum performance on the road at a reasonable price from a reputable premium brand, then you should take a look at the Bridgestone Potenza Sports. But if you have any plans to do track work with these particular tyres, I would avoid them because of the simple fact that if you work them hard, they are going to melt very, very rapidly and they cannot handle on my car, with what I was doing on that particular day, they were not fit for purpose, and the OS, the off offside front melted. I bought a replacement one, because the other three are worn and started melting, but nowhere near to the same extent as this one, which takes all the punishment. So I've invested 400 pounds in these tires, I wanna get my money's worth out of them, which meant investing another sort of 80 quid to replace that one, so I can get my money out of the other ones. But I know I'm going to destroy this one as well. So I won't personally be buying these tyres again because my requirements for my cars are that they can stand up to track use. The Michelin Pilot Super Sports fail that test as well because they melt, but they don't fail it as badly as this tyre. I've never seen anything like what happened to this. The Goodyear Super Sports, I believe, are okay, although I've not personally tested them. Same with the PS4s, although I think they're a little bit down on dry grip. These Bridgestones, obviously, no, can't take the coat of the track. And the good old Kumos, they, are, they can take a hammering without melting, even though it's a soft compound. You don't get that uneven shoulder wear on them. Or, or I didn't when I ran them on the, one, the M140, not the M240, but it'd be the same sort of deal. The M240 has an awful front-end stock kind of camber setup where you will work the shoulders a bit harder, but... Really, that's no excuse. These tyres just couldn't take um, the abuse and they started melting after the first four lap session, which is not which is no good to me. So I hope that's a fair review, guys. Um, you know, there's pros and there's weaknesses and I've given you my kind of opinion on these tyres. Um, I have enjoyed driving on them on the roads around Wales. Had a hell of a lot of time and really did appreciate them, but... I've explained why they're not for me. So thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. See you soon on the Forensics Detailing channel. Bye for now. Holding on to what I knew But the moment's gone Where was I when you